we're going to talk some David Njoku. Mm -hmm. So you put a post up about it. He went on the Jim Rome show last week and basically was non-committal when he was asked about if he saw himself as a Cleveland Brown. He said that he wasn't as thrilled with his role, which I think we all kind of got the sense of. And, you know, of course, you're the one that reported on the trade request in the middle of the season. So we all kind of got the sense that maybe he wasn't real happy with his new role in this offense. And now that's only kind of reinforced by what happened when he went on the Jim Rome show and didn't commit to being a member of the Cleveland Browns. So how do you think this plays out? Should the Browns trade him? Will he ask for another trade officially? Should they just not? I mean, they can release him. That that fifth-year option is not guaranteed. They have a lot of options here. So how do you think this plays out? Yeah, it's interesting. And we didn't get a chance to really talk to David Njoku very much. Uh, you remember, of course, that uh, when I wrote right before the trade deadline that he wanted to be traded again. And if you recall, he tweeted something out. And I can't remember if he – he might have used my name. He said – I do remember, I don't remember the treat, tweet word for word, but he said, I didn't tell Mary Kay I yeah. want to trade it. It was something like that. But right. it was also very much like, right. yeah, maybe you didn't, <laughs> whatever. Right. And, and, and I took a little bit of grief for that, okay, um, because it, it sort of made it seem like uh, he might have been saying, I didn't say I wanted to be traded or I don't want to be traded, but that wasn't the case. And so I responded to that tweet and I said, that is exactly right. He did not tell me that. He didn't tell me that, but someone who knew what he wanted did tell me that, and it was a very reliable source. So, you know, I wouldn't have written it unless I knew that it was true. And he basically kind of confirmed some of that, don't you think? When he when he talked to Jim Rome, he basically said, you know, it was up and down. I, I tried to put my head down. I tried to just... Um, you know, I didn't want to ruin the season for everyone else. So I just tried to go out there and do the best I could. I did my job. But when you think about it, Dan, he only had 19 receptions for 213 yards and two touchdowns. That 19 receptions ranked seventh on the team behind Odell Beckham Jr., who was done after week seven with a torn ACL. So here he is catching fewer passes than Odell Beckham Jr., who missed the last, whatever, nine games of the season. Uh, and truthfully, you know, I can kind of see why he would be upset about that because he was a number one pick. The Browns did pick him number one over, not, not overall, number, they picked him in the first round. They traded up to get him at number 29 overall in 2017. And you would expect more than 19 catches from a first round tight end. I mean, you just would. They also picked up his fifth year option for next year. That fifth year option is worth $6.013 million. The thing about that fifth year option, however, is that it's not guaranteed yet. That doesn't start happening upon exercising it until this class of 2018 coming up for their options by May 3rd. But David's was the last class where when they exercise the option, it's only guaranteed for injury up until the first day of the league year on March 17th, which brings us to decision-making time. The Browns will have to make a decision by then. By March 17th, they need to figure out, are they going to keep him on the roster at $6.013 million for the year, which is a pretty good bargain for a tight end, a good starting tight end, um, a really good bargain for a starter. Uh, or do they trade him or do they let him go? Now, I think my feeling on it would be, and I don't think the Browns want to do this, but if he absolutely doesn't want to be here and he's not on board and he's not one of those guys that is, you know, happy and all in and willing to do anything that it takes, uh, like he did do last year, if he's not willing to do that again, to come back and just be like, okay, if I get 20 catches, I get 20 then I think I would try to move him and get something in return for him if you can. That would be my first choice. If I couldn't do that, um, maybe I would, would keep him. I don't know if I would just release him outright uh, because that is a valuable position in Kevin Stefanski's offense. And I thought 
towards the end of the season, I thought he started playing pretty well. And I thought he played really well in the Kansas City game. So I would, um, I would think about trading him or just trying to keep him and see if you can't come to some meeting of the minds. So here are the players who were targeted more than David Njoku this season. Njoku had 29 targets. Jarvis Landry was first with 101. Austin Hooper second with 70. Rashard Higgins third with 52. Kareem Hunt fourth with 51. Uh, Odell Beckham was had 43. And Harrison Bryant had 38. So he was not targeted a whole lot in the passing game. And he was kind of more of a blocker this year you know this is tough because if you're the browns you've done nothing but take up for the guy i mean there was really no there was no real reason that you had to pick up that fifth year option but they did it because they kind of bet on him improving they liked the fit they liked the tight end heavy offense you got to have tight ends right so but there was really no true like football reason he hadn't shown you a whole lot necessarily to say oh yeah got to pick up that fifth year option and I do wonder what they would have done if it were fully guaranteed once you pick it up but I thought he played better this year I thought he had a nice season now I don't think he's a number one tight end necessarily but I thought he had a nice season and so for the Browns I'm kind of with you if he's going to absolutely just put his foot down and demand a trade and not show up to whatever he needs to show up to and, and he's willing to pay those fines or whatever and you kind of get to a Duke Johnson situation, then yeah, you, you've got to look at trading him. But at the same time, if he's going to show up like he did last year, even if he's not happy and put in the work and do what you ask him to do, I, I think you keep him around. 